Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so if you're like me, maybe you have canes lying around. Hum, it's possible. I have gathered just a little selection of some of my canes that are waiting for me to do something with them. Well, we did a bug, a gnu, and a jaguar. That was one way to use some. But here's another way, and it's quite a simple way. Making chains. All right, now here's a chain I made with this, and this is what I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna use this. This was from my four day cane <laughs> class, and I think this might have been, hmm, was it the first one I made, day one? Maybe it was day two. This was, no, this was day one. Anyway, I have plenty of it. So that is what I'm going to use to make this chain. Now, as an example, let me show you some of the jelly rolls that were used to make a chain. Da, da, da. You see, it's quite simple to do. And it is a great way to use all those canes you might have sitting around waiting. You could even use square ones. You can use triangle shaped ones. You can use just about anything you can think of. So I think I've talked enough. Let's get started. All right, so what do we need to make our chain? Number one, we need a cane. Here's my cane. Number two, you need jump rings. Now these are small, they're oval, but you can use rounds. I'm sure somewhere in my studio I have round, but I don't use round. And so, you know, there's a stray round one somewhere in here, but all my uh, jump rings are oval. You're going to need poly paste and a brush. This is going to be very helpful, this little rod. Or you could just use the end of this or a big stick, whatever you have. Oh, clay. Okay. Need a little piece of paper and a pencil. Okay, so first of all, let's make a template. Da -da, that's what this is for. So let's see if I have a cutter that's close to this size. Too big. Next one might be a little small. Oops, oh, I picked the same one. Here, this one's just a touch smaller, but it will do. Hmm. Mm hmm. Will it be easier to use a small or the large when I get to positioning it over the clay. I'm going to try small. I'm just going to draw around with my pencil. Then I'm going to fold it so that the pencil mark oh, it's probably easier this way. I can actually see it. Okay, so the pencil mark is falling back on the pencil mark, which tells me that the fold is the center of this circle. Okay, this is going to be helpful. I'm going to need this later. Set that aside. Okay, now... When you cut your cane, it'd be good if you're gonna cut a whole bunch of slices and then, you know, sort of production style, if you would cut and place the slices that are adjacent to each other next to each other. You see, in this cane, these slices, and we're going to need two for each chain link. The two that are adjacent, I cut one, I cut two. 
are the most alike, much more alike than, for instance, this cane, cane slice here and a cane slice here, okay? So it's easier if you pair them off. So let's just make a pair. Now, I'm aiming for about one, one and one half millimeter thick. Now, the first cut is usually a bad one. See? Bad. 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 That goes in the um, scrap pile. And I don't move it now because it's sort of, I cut it, it's kind of settled in to a position. So as long as I don't move it, it's much better than if I keep moving it. Because every time you move it, it's like the first slice is like a fresh slice and it looks kind of like this. Okay, cut slow. Watch your blade as you go through. Doink. And this is pretty good. Now, it's a little bit thin here, but I think we can live with that. There's one slice. As long as it's not like extremely thick in some parts and extremely thin in others. Let's take another slice. Cut slowly again. Kind of watch it go through. And it goes without saying, you want to use a stiff blade. Not one of those skinny blades. Noodly skinny blades, right? Which, as a matter of fact, I have those skinny blades, but rarely do I use them. Okay, there's a second. Now, these two are a pair. These two are a pair. They are most alike. They are most alike. Okay, so I will continue. I would continue, and I would pair them like so. But I'm going to stop, and I'm going to make this one. Move the cane aside. Now, here's where the template comes in. I'm going to take this template and I'm going to try to place it over, I'm going to center the slice. Now, because this has a pattern too, I have to decide where it's going to be. So let's just run it straight through the middle like that. So one of the little white arms is here and then um, that little Skinner Blend guy is there. Now I'm going to take a needle and pierce two holes. And I know, <laughs> it's really hard to see, but I, it's right there, and it's right there. I know, a little hard to see. Now, because I happen to have El Chubbo fingers, oops, I'm going to use this little flat nose plier. What I want you to note is that the opening is here. I'm gripping directly opposite the opening. And I'm going to put the opening as close to where the dot is, like that. So that opening is now sort of dug into the clay. Let's do the other one. The reason why we need the template. is so that we can put these two jump rings right along the center, like that. Okay. Now, what you have to make sure, you have to make sure there's enough room here, the exposed jump ring, to get another ring through because they're linked together with, a, with another jump ring. And this is a larger one. Um, I like using the larger ones to link them together. And the smaller ones are actually embedded in the clay. Okay. So let's take this little guy. And I'm just going to lightly roll. Just to try to embed lightly. But I'm not like pushing it in really hard. I sort of want it to go halfway into this slice, and then it will go halfway into this one. The thing you don't want is you don't want any air. 
So I'm just going to grab some of this poly paste. And this is a situation where poly paste is much, much better than liquid because it's going to fill. See how it's filling that whole area? Just like that. Now let's fill the other area. And now the chances that this is going to pull out of the clay have been greatly minimized because I put poly paste in there. Okay, so let's pick this guy up. And I do believe this is the way it goes. Like so. Okay, just like that. Now take your rod, <laughs> it's got clay on it, and just lightly roll to join the two halves, like that. Now let's pick this puppy up. Peel it off the paper and take a look at what we have. Now what I want to do here is just lightly roll along the edge. Oh, great. Okay, I'm back. I lost electricity for a moment. It came back almost immediately. As I said before, it's springtime in the Rockies. And um, such things happen in my house. Okay, so this is not as perfect as I would hope it to be. Because when I put the pieces together, I didn't get them exactly one over the other. And that's why this top slice has kind of moved a little bit. So let me see if I can adjust it just a bit. I will try. Let's see if I can just push it down on this side. Like so. This side is a little thin. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Not the most perfect slice I've ever made, but hey. Not too bad. Not too bad. Could be better, but it could be worse. Okay, so now here we have the option of adding texture. If you want to add texture, this is that dual plex stuff, the refrigerator stuff. Refrigerator liner keeps your veggies fresh and textures your polymer clay. So I'm just going to place it right there and texture both sides at the same time. And, as luck would have it, really taking that clay and filling in the space around the jump ring so it's not coming out. It's just not. Okay? I think that looks great. It's not perfect. But I think it looks great. It's very neat and tidy. And this will make a nice little chain. So that, in a nutshell, is the new improved way of making disc links. Much easier than taking screw eye pins and fussing with that kind of thing. And, um, <laughs> as luck would have it, it's also simpler. So, I hope you have learned something. I hope you've enjoyed our short session together. I will finish... Um, actually, let me make an actual chain so I can show you. So I got some work to do. I'll be back. All right. So um, I've done six. I have to do more. I have to do more, but um, I thought I would stop for a moment. 
and point out that here they are, but they certainly don't need to be flat. So I have taken this. This I got at a Chinese uh, store, and I think it's for dim sum. It used to have a handle it's right there. I pulled the handle out. But I can just drop these in like so, and now they will just be gently cupped. Okay. Ta -da. All right, just wanted to point that out. So let me finish. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out though is the very last thing you do to these pieces themselves is look and make any shape adjustment you think is necessary. This is not quite rounded out enough. So look, it's just a simple matter of just a few, a few little tugs and you can refine the shape, okay? All right, so I'll be back. I'm gonna fill this tray and then I'll be back. All right, so here they are. And you can see I just popped a little crystal in the middle. I think that's vitral medium, maybe? Excuse me, anyway, that's it. So now I'm going to put this in the oven. I'm going to bake them for 40 minutes at 300 degrees, and I start from a cold oven, then I'll be back. Okay, so my pieces have been taken out of, uh, out of that metal pan, and I'm going to connect them now. So you grip, and the way you open and close jump rings is not to pull them apart, but it is actually to twist like this, all right? You put it in, connect the next one. Then twist them back into position. Okay. All right. Now, I always use ovals. I never use rounds. And um, you've probably, you might have heard me talk about this before, but here's the reason. If you use something round, the ring continually turns, 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 turns. That means the opening, which is right here, is eventually going to find itself next to one of the embedded jump rings. And when that happens, you have a good chance of losing it. What happens here, because it's oval, I want you to watch, there's the opening. When I pull on it, like this, that seats the jump ring in a particular position. You know what that position is? That opening is always on the side, okay? So the chance of these coming apart because that O-ring rotates and finds itself in the wrong place is very minimal. Kind of impossible. <laughs> kind of impossible when you're wearing them. Anyway, so that's the scoop. Let me finish linking, but this is what I have so far. <laughs> Ta-da, I like it. Okay, so I put it together, and 15 uh, of these is enough for me to get it over my head so I don't need a clasp. You can see how it comes together. So um, all of the dapped or cupped pieces are going the same way. Here is kind of the back, okay, like so. But that is it. Now here's another example. Now these two necklaces are actually canes made from my Jumpstart Jelly Roll class. And um, they are connected the same way. This was the first one I made and I, <laughs> I made it with a black back and it was a little more difficult to make until I figured out this way, which is way simpler. And then I made this guy. And this is lighter, double-sided, made exactly, constructed. The discs are constructed the same way as this one, but they're flat. Now, this Jumpstart Jelly Roll class is one that I was selling, and I sold it for quite a while, uh, so I can't give it away free. But what I will be doing is putting this in the member classroom. I've pulled it down so it can't be purchased any other way but it will be in the member's classroom. 
And depending on when you're watching this, it might already be there. Okay. So that is our little tutorial in a nutshell. So I hope you make many disc chains. I really like them. I like the way they hang, the way they lay on the body. And I like the fact that they're quite easy and quite durable. Very sturdy construction. Now, one last thing, please use a very strong clay. See how thin they are? They're not all uniformly thin because I'm not a machine and I can't cut all my slices exactly the same, but I cut them quite thin. So make sure you use a clay that is strong and durable. Please, or you'll be unhappy, you will cry. Okay, that's it for this class. I'm Donna Cato. Thanks for watching. Bye.